How would you have handled the ECW? <laughs> oh, <Yes>. God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this real And by the way, I, I saw the ECW roster as of the time that they went out of business, and I can certainly understand why. I don't even know who some of them fucking people were. But uh, no, ECW. Look, ECW had a lot of my friends work there and, and had a lot of great talent go through there. And ECW at that time was a shell of its former self, which, at, at, as big as it ever got, it was seen by one-tenth of as many people in this country and a minute fraction around the world as WWF and WCW. And having an ECW invasion to me would only muddy the water. Uh, they went out of business, Take cherry-pick your key talent, give them jobs, give them positions, one or the other. But to put ECW in there, <clears throat> if they hadn't have prolonged the agony of that, I knew when ECW started I was in Knoxville, running Smoky Mountain. And... I would hear what was going on, and, and Brian Hildebrand, Mark Curtis, a dear friend, you know, had had friends that would send tapes and et cetera. We'd watch, and they, I said, they're, they're beating the fuck out of each other for real. They're falling off the fucking roof. They're setting each other, they're wrapping each other up in barbed wire. What the fuck are they doing up there? I knew it was not going to be good for the business, for the professional wrestling industry. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how right I was in that even though ECW presented Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero, it's always forever known. Get the tables, tables, chairs, ladders, fucking fire extinguishers, lights out, crucifixions, barbed wire, broken glass, the rottens. Boy, they sure were, too. Um, this hardcore bullshit where suddenly, you know, I like the business, as Dutch Mantel always says in his greatest line, I like the business a lot better when the marks were out front in the seats. All of a sudden, guys are beating the fuck out of each other for real, in front of a bunch of people who know that everything they're doing is choreographed and they're cheering it because they're really hurting each other. What kind of fucking psychology is that? And they're doing it for practically no money and they're also doing it just for the sake of being on television so the people chant ECW. Why do the wrestlers in the ring want the people to chant the name of the promotion? It used to be, go, Ricky, go, go. Now it's ECW. Oh, great. I just fractured my fucking sacroiliac, broke my fucking leg, and shoved a fucking wooden spike up my taint. And they're not chanting Jim, Jim, Jim. They're chanting ECW. Great. It's fucking stupid. It, it hurt the fucking guys. It hurt the fucking business. It immuned and numbed the fans. You can't do an angle anymore, an injury angle, because they've seen these guys do everything but fucking be run through a razor blade factory. It was it, it hurt the business, it hurt our tools, the ability we had to get heat and draw. It numbed people to everything. It was fucking rotten. I closed ECW down, taking the four guys that I wanted to take and, and hope that everybody forgot about it and maybe we could go back to some semblance of sanity where guys didn't have to kill themselves and and, and cripple themselves and shorten their careers in front of people who knew that they were cooperating with each other to do it. Mm -hmm. And when you watch these really hardcore matches, <laughs> you know, the wrestler, right? Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, I saw a bootleg DVD because I couldn't go to the movies in Louisville because some, many people know who I am there. I've been on TV there for 25 fucking years. And I was embarrassed because now people look at you like, Oh, you're in that wrestling bed. They take staple guns and staple dollar bills to each other's heads and cut each other with razor blades? What kind of fucking morons might they be? You want to appeal to 200 guys that ain't getting laid that night that are fucking sitting in a goddamn truck stop parking lot, or do you want to appeal to 10,000 people in a major coliseum because you're an athlete and a performer and you are doing something that most people are not good enough to do? I'm good enough to hit you in the head with a blunt instrument. And I bet you that you will bleed when I do it because I'll just hit you really hard. Mm. What talent did that fucking take? Now then when people pay to see that, do they really feel good about themselves when they go home? If they do, then they're the same type of people that fucking molest the cat and kick the dog. I don't want to be around those people. I want to be around the people who went to see a great performance by some talented athletes and some great talkers and some interesting personalities. I don't want to be around a fucking bunch of people that applauded when a guy took a staple gun and stapled a dollar bill to some other guy's fucking head. Much less, want it. I would rather move next door to somebody on the federal sex registry, sex offender registry, than move next door, door to somebody in the wrestling business after seeing the wrestler. Broken down, drug addict, has no family, and fucking slices and dices himself to pieces on the fucking weekends for chicken feed. And, oh, 
But there was a success story in The Wrestler. One guy opened a used car lot in Phoenix. God damn, what a success story. At least I got something to look forward to in my old age. Mm. Fuck! It was embarrassing. Anyway, so go ahead. Quite a comment.